Hi and welcome to this screencast recording. My name is Chris Atherton. I'm a senior applications engineer here at Symmetry uh, in the UK. Uh, Symmetry is part of CADQ. Um, in this recording we're going to be taking a look at the various products that make up the Vault product family and looking at the key bits of functionality that uh, will be of benefit and at what level those are in and how those could uh, affect you. Um, the Vault product family, let's just swap over to my webinar, there we go. The Vault product family is made up of several products, uh, we'll be taking a look at them individually in a minute, but first to, to start with, we need to understand what Vault's about. Vault is a product data management system. So a data management system has several features that it needs to be able to give it a design department. First of all, we need to be able to manage and track any data that we put into it. So I need to be able to see uh, when that data was added to the system, who added it, uh, and look at the previous changes. I need to be able to see the links and relationships between files. So I can understand if I make a design change, how that change is going to be affected, uh, what what other designs might be affected by that design change, or if I'm changing an assembly, what other components I might need to update. It should allow me the ability to search for my data. It should allow me the ability to reuse the data quickly and efficiently as well. And hopefully during this webinar you will see that. Finally, it should allow you to work together with your teammates and allow you to see who's working on what data, when they've worked on it, what changes they've made to those as well. Um, that's not just within one design team, it might be within design teams globally. The most important thing that a PDM system really is there to do though is to protect and back up all that data that defines your company, that intellectual data. Without that data, you haven't got a product, you haven't got a service. So it is key to make sure that that is backed up correctly. And Vault should hopefully allow you to do that. Now, Vault um, works off a, a server client sort of relationship. So we have a bit of software that sits on um, a server called the Autodesk Data Management Console. And we have a bit of software that sits on the user's PCs called the Thick Client. And users will check in data or use the Thick Client to add data to the Vault. Now what in real time that means is that they are saving their data on a working folder with uh, on their local machine. And as they use the Vault software, I check that data into the server or copy that data from their computer to the server and store it where it needs to store it. If users need to get hold of a file, they go to the uh, through the, the Vault software and it will download that data from the server to their local machine. This is the benefit that the users are always working locally on their local hard drives and therefore there isn't so much network traffic all the time as you would have if you're working on servers directly. The Vault splits the data that's sent to it into two bits on the server. Uh, the actual file is, is saved within a file store, uh, which is just a, a folder structure within the server. Um, it also extracts out all the metadata and the relational data uh, from the files from the design and stores that in a SQL database. Um, that SQL database can then be altered by users so they can log in through the Vault software, change a property and when they get hold of the file that will be reflected and again you'll see that as we go through this webinar. Um, every client that connects into Vault will need the CAD so it will need the client software on. Um, it will be needed especially for any uh, CAD users 
So if you're using Inventor, you're using AutoCAD, you will need the client software on. If you're just putting a few documents into Bolt, you can go through a web client. And again, I'll cover that later on. All the data that you require is automatically copied between the server and the client. So there is no need for the users to have to set that going independently. They just search for the file they want, tell it they want to open it, and it will copy that for, uh, data automatically locally and open it up for them. Um, it works off different bits of software, so we can use Microsoft uh, Server 2008 R2 or 2012. Um, if you're using Vault Basic, you can use Windows 7 and 8 as well to run the server software. Um, the client software runs on Windows 7 and 8, so you need to make sure you're on one of those operating systems. In terms of the SQL database, we can use Express or Full 2008 or 2012. The exact requirements are on the Autodesk website. All the traffic between the clients and the servers goes through IIS. Um, the Internet Information Service, so it is quite important to make sure that you know of any other applications that are going to be using the IIS on the server so that we don't interfere with those. So what we've talked about so far is the fact that Vault works off this client-server relationship. Um, Vault is a very scalable product, however. We can have clients within one design team connecting to a local server. We can also have a user VPNing in to the company accessing that server using the client on their local machine as well. So we got quite a nice scalable system there. For companies that are, have more than one site, however, VPN may not be the best solution. And for those companies, we can start looking at different types of replication. And this is where we have multiple servers and we're copying bits of the data to those other servers. So if we're looking at a UK-wide replication, we may be looking at copying just the file store between different servers. What that means in effect is that the heavy CAD files, the heavy design documentation gets copied overnight to the different servers. Maybe we set it so that it copies every hour. Uh, any new data between the servers, but the metadata, the relational data uh, is stored inside SQL, is just stored on the primary server, in this case showing in Aberdeen. What this means is as the clients log into Vault, they log in to the local server, but they're actually looking at a database up in Aberdeen. And we, we find actually it's quite quick and it works quite well because the heavy data that they need to download to their computers is already local to their site. The metadata, the relational data stored in the SQL database is quite lightweight and doesn't take any time really to download. For clients that are global, we can start looking at connecting different work groups together. Now what this means is that we have different clusters of servers where we are replicating not just the file store but we're also replicating the SQL databases to different servers within each of those work groups. What this means is that the UK and Europe might be a, a, a primary uh, work group with one server having a SQL database and a few other servers having file stores. We may have in America uh, a primary server over there that has the SQL database and any data between the UK and between America would be copied between those servers. Local to America we may have again smaller servers that do file store replication and in this sort of way we, we've managed to make this uh, the vault quite a scalable solution. Um, Symmetry themselves have one-man bands and some small companies of two or three users using vault effectively um, but we also have some larger clients with servers globally all linked together uh, working effectively. So 
let's take a look at the actual Vault product family. What's it made up of? There are four products in the Vault product family. Vault Basic, Vault Workgroup, Vault Professional, and another product called Vault Office. The main three products are the Basic, Workgroup, and Professional. Vault Basic is the product that comes with Product Design Suite. So any of you that have Product Design Suite already have Vault Basic. It just needs to be installed. Vault Basic gives you the ability to check in your CAD documentation. It gives you the ability to check in any other bits of documentation as well so that you can manage and track your designs within the, uh, the Vault product. You're able to attach documents together so you can take a calculation and attach it to a design document so when you look at that design you can see the calculations that are related to it. The integration within the CAD environment is completely free and fully integrated within quite a few of our products and we'll take you through the list in a short while. Vault Basic will give you the ability to see what a file uses and where a file is used and that way that gives you the ability to make a decision as you change your design as to what those changes mean. So is it a new part number? Is it a new revision? You're also able to see which components have uh, drawings associated with them and you're also able to view the history of any document within Vault as well so you can see the development over time of that document. Another useful bit of functionality that Vault Basic gives you is the ability to copy a project, copy a design. So I can take an inventor assembly and all its related documentation and copy that renumbering at the same time to create a new design. We can then swap parts out with other components in Vault or create new files where we need to to integrate into that design. Uh, and again I'll show you that in a short while. Moving upwards we have Vault Workgroup and this is a product very much designed for departments that need a little bit more control over their designs. So the main key areas that Vault Workgroup gives you is revision control. The ability to say on any document what the current revision is. Is it revision A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, whatever scheme you use. Now there's no point in being able to assign a revision if you can't say where that document is in its life cycle. Is it work in progress? Is it pending release? Is it released? Is it obsolete? Is it sent to a client uh, with dot .control uh, pending a check? You name it. Okay. So we have the ability within Vault Workgroup to be able to define our own life cycles and put our documents into those life cycles automatically as they're added to Vault. By doing this we can control the revision of that document as well. So if I add a new document to Vault, it will automatically go into work in progress at revision A, as an example. I can then work on that document, and when I'm ready, I could send that for checking, and then send it for approval. And once that's approved, that would be released. The beauty of it, this is that we have full control over when a document can be released, what properties need to be filled in before it can be released and who can edit the document at different stages within that life cycle. If I was to take a document and move it from released back to work in progress that would automatically bump the, the revision. So we have the ability to control what goes on within that life cycle as well. Vault Workgroup also gives us the ability to add file naming to our documents within Vault. If I generate a new file inside Inventor, I will get the option to create a new file name based on the numbering scheme that I put into place within Vault. And it will just take the next number out of the list. If I rename a file in Vault, I get the same option and the same list. And again, I'll show you that in a minute. 
When we move up to Vault Professional, we're starting to introduce a lot more functionality. So in Vault Professional, this is where we start to look at being able to disseminate that data out between different design teams or multi-site replication. We also get the ability to start managing our bills and materials within the design product as well. I would be able to take my documents, take my design that I've got from Inventor, from AutoCAD, from any of the third party products that work with Vault, and I can extract out the bill of materials and alter the bill of materials within Vault. This gives me the ability to add mechanical and electrical bomb components together to create a full engineering bill of materials. We have the ability to do engineering change orders in Vault Professional as well. So I can raise a feedback request, I can send that for approval, someone can approve that that feedback is required, that can be detailed to someone to do work, they can make the changes, send those changes for checking, send those changes for approval, and then those changes can be released and the change order locked down. The beauty of doing this is that everything is documented, it's fully auditable, and we can attach data and markups and any other supporting documentation to that change request at any point so that you have full auditability of um, that change. There is no point in being able to make these changes and being able to manipulate the bill of materials, however, if we can't then output that data to send to our other systems. So Vault Professional gives us the ability to take the data from our bill of materials and export that to PLM and ERP systems. Um, we can also import the data from those systems if required as well. Vault Professional gives us the ability as the Bill of Materials is released for the wider audience and as documents are released for, for manufacture, we get the option to view that release data on a web client. And we'll take a look at the web client later on. The web client is designed so that we can give certain users access. They'll only be able to see the data that is relevant to them and only the data that has been released by the design team. Vault Professional also gives us a couple of integrations as well. One is the ability to integrate with SharePoint, so we're able to see some of the engineering data that resides within Vault within our SharePoint projects. And it gives us the ability to integrate some third-party CAD products with Vault. Vault is designed to work primarily with the Autodesk product range. However, some of the third party products do have the integration as well. The final product that we have is one called Vault Office, and this kind of sits to the side of the other three. Vault Office is a product that you can buy alongside Vault Workgroup and Vault Professional. Um, it's designed for non CAD users to be able to manage their data. Vault Office users will be able to check in non-CAD files through the web client and in the latest 2015 R2 release will be able to manage revisions and life cycles on their data as well through their very own thick client. They can also participate in engineering change orders in Vault R2 um, which means that you can have a manager, you can have a project manager, you could have purchasing, you could have a um, quality manager on the shop floor, all taking part with change requests, all raising requests, all accessing the relevant data. Vault Office also gives you integration with Microsoft Word and Microsoft Excel. So users of Vault Office would be able to check in their data directly from inside Word and inside Excel. There is direct support within all the applications you can see on the screen with Microsoft uh, with Autodesk Vault. This isn't an extensive list 
of all the products that use Vault. You can put any type of file you want into Vault. However, these are the main ones that have full integration within them to be able to check in and check out your data um, without leaving the application you're working in. Uh, if you want to see more about what is in each of the products, there is a, a matrix available on the Autodesk webpage, so it'd be well worth you taking uh, a look to see. Okay, so let's actually take a look at the actual product. Um, we're going to take a look at some of the Vault Basic functionality first and work our way up from there. Um, Vault Basic has the ability to check in and out data. Um, within Vault Basic, we have full integration with, my, uh, with the Microsoft product family and also with the Autodesk product family, mainly Inventor and AutoCAD. You can see on the screen that we've got in front of us that we have a new tab within Inventor called Vault and our model window we also have a second option to see the state of the files within Inventor as they are in Vault. We can use this integration to be able to check in and out the data. Once the data is in we can manage and track all the versions that uh, relate to that file so we can see every change that's been made to that file. If we need to that allows us to revert to previous versions of that file so if someone's decided that they've been working on a file for a few hours made a couple of changes put it into vault and then thinks actually I need to go back to what I used to have they're able to roll back that model to, to that previous version within vault you will be able to see whether someone's working on the file so you can see here we've got some crosses on the file in case you might see a line through the file name um, so you're able to see whether someone else is working on that data or whether you are working on that data and again I'll show you that in a minute you're able to see where a file is used so in this example we can see that the engine crankshaft is used within the engine internals which is used within the engine model which is used in the engine drawing that way if I change the crankshaft I know exactly what models I need to change there may be multiple different assemblies that we need to alter we're also able to see where something uh, what something uses so I'm able to see from an assembly level the parts and sub assemblies and its parts that um, are down the tree we can also see any attachments that we have so we can attach parts list uh, XLS we can attach um, documentation, calculations, auto part, so that we're able to manage that data alongside our 3D and 2D design data. Remember, engineering isn't just about the, the CAD application. We have a lot of supporting documentation that we need to be able to manage as well. And finally, I said that we have the ability to copy a design and pick and choose whether we're going to copy or reuse a file. So it could be that we're copying um, a model of our car, but actually we're going to reuse the entire car apart from the seats. We're going to put different seats in. So we could reuse everything apart from the seats, which we make a copy of, so we can make some changes to those seats. Okay, so let's take a quick look at that. So I'm inside Inventor here and inside Inventor you can see I have a tab within Vault and within Vault I tab I have the ability to log on through the software to that server. So you get a username and password, you get the server you're logging on to and the database you're logging into and all I do is hit OK and that logs me in. Within our model I have the ability to have a look and see the status of these files within Vault. So you can see that I've got a load of files that have said that they're not checked in. I've got some files that are checked in but are um, sorry some files that are in Vault but are checked out to myself with a tick and I might have had some with a cross or a line through that are actually checked out to others and I wouldn't be able to edit. Once I'm done with my data, 
I can take my design let's just save all that and I can check in that data directly to Vault. As I check in I've got the option as to whether I create any visualizations let's just apply that to all files and I get the option to enter in some comments these comments then can be seen by the design team so that they know what changes I've made so in this case I'm just going to hit OK it's going to take all that data it's going to copy it from Inventor and put it onto the server and we can close that should I need to if I want to open from Vault I have the option to open as normal where I'm opening from my local machine or I can open directly from the Vault server. What this allows me to do is navigate through the folders within Vault or search to find any files that I want. So in this case I can search for the file I want and I could open it up just update some properties give it a second and there we have it okay if I want to I'm then able to start going into my design I can start in this case I'm just going to change the color so let's make it violet it knows that that file is read-only currently and that it's available for editing so it's asked me do I want to check it out and reserve it to myself I'm going to say yes it's made the change. I go back to my top level in Inventor. Now, if I look at my Vault tab, it's checked out any files it feels it needed to change. Once I'm happy, I can check them in. It's going to want to just save those files. I can put a comment. So, um, color change to um, Fox Body. Hit OK and those files will go to Vault. If I want to, I also have the ability to create a drawing very quickly. Let's paste a couple of views onto the drawing so we can see it. Okay. And when I save, I can save that data wherever I want. And I can check that data into Vault as well. It's just asking for a save. Initial check in of drawing. Okay, that. Okay, let's close those down. So, within our CAD applications, we have got full integration. We can open, we can edit, and we can change quite quickly and easily. Looking at the thick client. I have the ability here to log in and out with exactly the same information uh, that I was using within Inventor. Let's log in as Dave Designer. As I log in, I get an interface that's designed to look a little bit like Microsoft Outlook. So in here, I've got my folders, which I can dig through. Okay, there's my PLC unit. As I select any of these folders, I can see the files within, I can select the files, and I can get a whole load of tabs appearing uh, within here. Some of those tabs will show me where data is used, sorry, what it uses, where it's used, so I can see this used in that drawing. I can see a preview of the file in 3D, should I want to. Give that a second to load. So I don't have to open that file inside Inventor every time I want to view it. And I can see the history of that file as well and the comments that are made. And that allows me to see what changes were made. I can also see who made those changes. So within Vault Basic, we also have the option to be able to take our design and copy it. So I can take my top level here, I can right click, and I can say that I want to copy design. 
when I get the copy design dialog coming up you will see that I have the ability to take a look at the document tree as we have it so in here I can see my top level and I can see right the way through to the documentation, the sub-assemblies and everything within. In here I can pick and choose what folders I want to copy from and copy to and I can choose what files I want to make a change to. So one of the files I might want to make a change to is if I'll just pick this component one I can copy that one and any documentation at the same time any of these files that we're copying we could give a change in uh, number to so I can put a prefix on if I wanted or I could increment and you'll see it will bump up the numbers obviously in this case incrementing wouldn't be ideal so we're just going to put a prefix on there so we can search for them later on you can see it's not just putting a prefix on those to top two files but it's also putting a prefix on the related drawing. If we need to we can individually name anything and call it whatever we wanted. We can also say where that's going to be stored as well. We have additional options so we can copy a file, reuse a file or replace it with something else that exists in Vault should we want to. The other thing this will do is it will update all the part numbers for those files to match the new file name and when I hit OK Vault will go away, copy that design for me in the background, create the new folder and inside here you can see the new files have been generated. If I look at the Uses tab I can see it uses all the existing data apart from this 2001 file. If I go to an existing file and look at where used I'll be able to see that it's used within this subassembly 204 and then that's used in assembly 200 and GB200. So it's quite useful to be able to interrogate your designs like that. Vault Basic also gives me the ability to do this from within my uh, Microsoft Word and Excel and PowerPoint packages as well. So if I open up Excel, you will see that we get the same tab inside Excel that we get inside Inventor where we can log in. I can then create whatever data I want, save that data away. Okay, so in this case I'm just going to save it into my working folder. Designs, let's put it into the same folder. Um, so new PLC unit, we'll call that account for PLC. No, it's not, but let's pretend. We'll save that, and once it's saved, I can check in that data directly to the vault. And off it goes. If I want to use that data again, or look at it, or edit it, I can hit open. I'll get my open dialog box appearing. Again, I can search, or if I know where the data is, I can just find it very quickly. There's my calculation. I'm going to open it, and check it out, test 2, save, check it back in, and just delete it at the same time. Normally I'd add a comment as well. Off it goes, let's close down Excel, and when I refresh my client here, I can see that calculation coming through. Again, I can see its history, I can see if it was using any image files or any other documentation and I can preview it directly within um, this window. The beauty of Vault is I can link a lot of the documentation together so I can take my assembly okay, I can go up to my actions menu click on attachments or click on this attachments button here select it and attach that document there we go, into my design. So when I look at my design now, I will see that calculation attached to it. Okay, so that's the basically the functionality within Vault Basic. Let's move on to Vault Workgroup. So Vault Workgroup is about the control of that data. 
Inside Vault Workgroup we have the ability to manage and track our revisions so we can create our own revisioning schemes that we want. They can be defined within the application or we can import them should we need to. Any file that you put into Vault you can assign a revision to. It doesn't matter what type of file it is. And that revision that we assign in Vault we can synchronize back to any other type of file. So we can go back to a Word document, uh, um, go back to your AutoCAD document or it can go back to your Inventor document. This means that as you open up your files within Inventor you will have the exact revision within your I properties. As I mentioned before there's no point in having revision control if you don't know the life cycle and what state that that files in. So we also have the ability to have life cycle states as well. We can define our own life cycle schemes. We can say how we can transition between those schemes so can we go work in progress to check or can we go straight to released or can only certain people do that we can define all the security to go alongside it we can have as many lifecycle schemes as we want and we can make a lifecycle scheme default for a particular type of file so I could say that all my CAD documents that go in have to be checked and approved before they're released whereas my Word documents that I put in maybe they just can be straight to release, they don't need checked. So not only can we configure the security but we can also configure what property information needs to be filled in before we can release it and we also can configure what actions happen as we move a document between lifecycle states so is the revision bumped or uh, maybe the visualization or the properties get synchronized uh, maybe we're outputting a PDF we, we can do all that with Vault Workgroup. The way that we manage the revisions and what the default revision is for a particular file is by categorizing those files and again we can create any category of file we want and we can create rules that as we add our data to Vault automatically assign that data into a category each category can have multiple revision and multiple life cycle schemes giving users the choice as to which scheme they follow or you could be more restrictive and you can just give them access to one scheme which means they must follow that workflow in order to release their data the beauty of using ca categories as well is that we can determine what property information must be filled in not just based on the type of file or the state of the file but based on the category of the file as well. So you may find that en uh, anything that's going into the purchase category if you have one might need a supplier information filled in whereas anything that's manufactured might have to have a rough cost. Finally in Vault Workgroup we have the ability to take out names within our design. So as we create a new file or as we rename a file we have the ability to name that against a scheme. So what we'll do is just take a quick look at that. So let's swap over to Vault. So within Vault if you remember we've got our designs that we've put in to the, uh, to the server now you will see that these files have automatically been put into Vault. My current files are work in progress, revision A, and they're in an engineering category. My drawing is work in progress, revision A, but is in an engineering drawing category. Okay. My calculation is work in progress, revision A, but is in a different category altogether. It's in an office category. Okay. What you will also see as you work, look through the uh, where used and the uses tabs is that you'll see the state of all the files within that design as well. So I can see that files from my content center when they were added to Vault were released at that point. That's really useful. As a designer I now have the ability to change the state of these files. Now this can be done within Inventor or it can be done within Vault. Personally, I prefer doing it within Vault. I can choose just to do one level or I can do all levels. And you can see it's adding in all the different documents within my design. These documents, some of them are going through different lifecycle processes. So I could say that those going through the simple 
process are going to be released straight away. I could say those going through the flexible process are going for review. And you can see that we're changing all of these documents to suit. Once I'm done, I can hit OK and Vault will go away and change the state of all those files for me. As a designer, I can't review my work. I can't release that. That's for my manager to do. So if I try to change the state on my flexible products from review to released, you'll see that I can't actually change the state at all. I can't even move it back to work in progress in the example I've got here because I haven't got permission to do that. So let's log in as our manager. I'm going to apologize for these names, but my manager, they're easy to remember. And in here, I'm going to find my project again. There we go. It's for review, revision A. My manager is going to go in, take a look at my design, and he can release that data or move it back to work in progress, whichever suits. By doing that, if I hit OK, you'll see that all the files show as released and also, and also get a padlock beside them. The, this means that they are not uh, available for editing, they're read-only. When I'm using Vault Professional, this will also, at this point only, make them available on the web client. So, I'm going to change the state. I'm only going to change my top-level files. So, let's get rid of all the, the children underneath. And I'm going to say, well, actually, my CAD files, I'm going to move from release to work in progress. And there we have it. And hit OK. What you'll see is happening is that those files have now had their revision bumped to revision B. And that means that we now know revision A has been released and that we are now working on revision B of these files. So if I was to open this design inside Inventor, I would now be able to edit this data. It would be available for me to make my changes to. Um, the nice thing about Inventor, and let's just create this as a shortcut so I can find it quickly inside Inventor. So I'm going to go to Open, Open from Vault. Instead of searching, I'm going to look at my shortcuts. There's my file. I'm going to open it and check it out. Okay. If I was to look at my eye properties, you'll see it now says revision B on there. Okay. I also want to look at my drawing. So one of the nice things about Vault is that I don't have to go and find my drawing. If you're using work group or you're using professional, one of the things I can do is from within the CAD product, I can see the history of that file. I can see where it's used, including the drawing and I can open that drawing directly into my design. What you'll probably see here is that revision B has been added in to my revision table automatically. Let's put some descriptions. Say initial release and I'm just going to say view change. I'm not actually going to make a design change, I'm just going to say view change on there. So we can make the changes to that table if I want. I'm not going to fill in the date, and I'm not going to fill in the approved by. That information is going to get filled in by Vault itself. Let's just make a very small change to my file so that we can see it. In fact, what I'll do is I'll make these views shaded. I hit save on that. Again, a nice feature of Vault is you don't have to check in the drawing Okay, you can do that from the assembly. So I can say I want to check in this file. And I can say, well, that's great. Go away and include any documentation that we want as well. In this case, the drawing's not going to attach in because I have my vault set that as I close the file, it will automatically check in for me. Okay, so let's just put, um, we could put some information in if we wanted. Just in the interest of time, I'm just going to hit OK. And check that data into vault. 
and take a look at my vault that we've got. Okay, so we can see our drawings in and we can see our models in. Once we're done, again, we would have the option as the designer to put that through the process till it's released. So we can manage all of this data quite nicely. If we create a new file inside Inventor, as we go to save this file, let's just create a very quick shape. Okay, there's our sphere. I'm going to save. What you'll see is we get various numbering schemes that can appear and we can define our own numbering schemes. In this case I'm using company numbering scheme. I'm going to put the company name in that I'm going to use, so CAD Q. I'm going to hit OK and what you'll see is it takes that name out of our list. So I can save that. If I go and create another document and save, again put in CAD Q you should see that it's taken the next number out of that list so that in this manner you've not got multiple users putting in data with the same file names and part numbers uh, and I have to admit I find this really quite a useful function within Vault. So let's take a look at some of the other functionality that we've got as well Moving up to the pro level, we also have the ability to manage the bill of materials for a design. Now, what we get out of Inventor is a mechanical bill of materials. It's a bomb based up or uh, based on the components that we've modelled and the structure that we've modelled those in. So, what subassemblies they're in. There is an element of manipulation there, so we can. Uh, hide things from the bill of materials by making them phantom or making them reference. We can highlight things as being purchased, we can highlight things as being inseparable. We can also add in virtual components as well should we need to. What we also occasionally need to do though is add in bills of materials from other CAD products, um, add in additional line items so maybe I've got a casting and I uh, maybe I've got a, a machine component and I need to add the casting underneath or maybe I've got a length of steel and I need to add in the raw stock underneath and we can do that within Vault here. Also we can attach bills of materials together so I might have my bomb from inside Inventor but I may also have my bill of materials from AutoCAD Electrical and we can amalgamate the two together. We can extract the bill of materials from Inventor, Mechanical and Electrical as well as some third party products and there are quite a lot of things that we're able to do so we can create new bomb items, we can alter the bomb, combine it, manage the life cycles and manage the properties of that bomb. Again there's no point in manipulating that bomb if it's just going to sit within Vault. We need to be able to output that so that the rest of the company can use that data. So to do that we have the ability to export items uh, and import them into our manufacturing systems. Okay, We also have the ability to do engineering change orders and this is a typical process that you see on the screen. We can create change request, we can then submit that through to the design department who can then make the decision as to whether it's a valid request. If it is, they can put that through for someone to do work or they can reject the request and state why they've rejected it. When it's in the work state, an engineer will be able to unlock the, uh, the items from the uh, bill of materials or unlock the documents, make the required changes and then submit those changes through for checking where it can be rejected or approved and as it goes through the process it can be reviewed and then finally approved and locked out. Once the ECO is approved and locked out it can't be altered again and it is there for all time so it is fully auditable. At any stage we can add any relevant documentation to the files uh, to, to the change order and we can mark up any of the files within Vault to allow us 
to um, add those red line markups to the ECO. So if you look at this um, presentation online, uh, it's currently on the Prezi website, you'll be able to see there's a whole load of videos that you can go through that show you a typical ECO process. Volt Professional also comes with access to Buzzsaw. So Buzzsaw is a system that Autodesk own that allows us to give partners, suppliers, any customers access to data that they require from us. If you imagine Vault sits behind your firewall, so it's very internal to your company, that way all your uh, IP data is protect protected. There may be additional departments using Vault, but it's very much it's your company that uses it. As a certain file gets to a particular point in its life cycle, we have the ability to send that file to Buzzsaw. And that will copy it out of Vault into the Buzzsaw environment, which is looks very much like Vault, uh, um, a little bit like the Autodesk 360 platform, where we can invite any of our customers or any of our suppliers to have access to that data. We can determine what security rights they have, so they might only have viewing rights to that data, or they may have editing rights to that data as well. If they make a change to that data, we can set Buzzsaw so that it copies that data back into Vault as well, and it can become part of our life cycle. So let's take a quick look at the item side first within Vault. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my files here, and I'll do it from the, the assembly, I'm just going to change the state of those files, and release that data. So let's put it for review, change the state from review to released, and off it goes. One of the things that happens as we release data is that that data is sent to something called the job processor, which goes away and can generate any visualizations, update our title blocks, update our parts list, uh, sorry, update our title blocks, uh, update any of the um, other relevant information within our design so that it's up to date when we look at the preview. So this is going away, it's updating the revision table currently on the drawing and when it's finished we will be able to see that preview within Vault. We want that preview to be generated because that then allows us to view it on the uh, web browser and within Vault so we don't have to open the file. The job processor can also do additional functionality um, if you um, have some of the plugins that are available for Vault. So for instance, our company uh, CADQ do a product called Naviate and one of the things Naviate has done in the background using the job processor is that as I've released that document, that drawing, it's also created a DXF of that document so that we have a DXF ready to output. Okay. Once we got our data released, I'm ready to start working with the bill of materials. So I can take my design, I can say that I want to assign items to this. Now, the question mark here is, what is an item? Well, the rest of the company thinks in terms of items. A design department thinks in terms of documents. When we're talking about documents, we're talking about the 3D assembly file, the drawing file, maybe the DXF, maybe the calculation that we are creating as designers to make um, our design and to make the, the information so it's available for the wider audience. The rest of the company, though, though, think in terms of part numbers. They get given a part number and they've got to either procure it or manufacture it. So what an item is, is kind of a placeholder or a data card um, that contains properties and contains links to all the documentation for that part number. So you will see the assembly file, you'll see the drawing file, you'll see any relevant calculations. There might be a paint spec applied to that item as well. It might be applied to 
several items so that anyone in the company that looks at that item will know what documentation is available for it. So let's go and assign our item. Vault will go away, it will extract out the bill of materials and it will create a data card and here we can see our data card. This data card may have certain properties, some will be pulled in and created from the CAD product, others we can type in ourselves. So I might have a PLM system and I might have a particular document number that I want to fill in there, I might have a particular material we want to fill in. Each item that's created gets a category, in this case it's realized that this is an assembly but there are different types and we can create our own, so for instance I've created one for a batch, I'll show you that in a minute, and we can fill in a title and a description as well should we want to. Now if we also want to we can change the part number at this stage and that will synchronize it back to the CAD product. Within this data card you'll also see that the assembly and the drawing have both been associated with this data card. Maybe I also want to associate another product. What I can do is go to my uh, folder here. I can say that I want this calculation and I can drag it into my data card. And by doing that what you'll see is it attaches it in. As we attach it we get the option to decide what type of link it's going to be, okay, if we want to link it. If we don't want it linked we have got the ability to use an attachments option to attach data into here. So what else is this data card allowing us to do? Well the main bulk of it is inside this bill of materials area. So we can see here the bill of materials for our design. Currently it's greyed out and the reason for that is that in a lot of companies bill of materials need to be released at different stages. You may have long lead items and so what we are able to do is at any stage I can turn on a particular item and if I wanted to I can also turn on everything underneath in that branch so we can see that's added in. If we want to turn on other items we can, we can select them all, turn the rows on and this will create the data cards for those items as well so their relevant files will get associated to their items and we can see in the side here we've already got one item that's been created, it's been released already, we've got others that are pending creation. This is a really nice area because one of the things I'm able to do is I can go in to any of these and change the quantity if I need to up the quantity. Maybe the design's got a quantity of one but maybe the bill of materials is going to have a quantity of two because we're going to give some spares with it. Maybe we're going to create another item within here. So I can come up to my top level or to any level within here. I can add a row. I can either add an existing item, in which case I can go away and search for it. Okay, and we can see it there. Or maybe I want to create a new item directly in place. In this case, I might want to add an existing item. If I don't know what the item number is and I can't find it on that list, I can leave this window open, better if you've got two screens. Go to my item master and start looking through to find what we want. Okay, so maybe I want to pull in this plate, maybe I want an electrical component. So I can go away and find some of my electrical files, uh, should they exist. Again, if I don't know what the item number is, but I do know where the document is in vault, one of the things that I've got the ability to do is go into my design, find any files I want, and find if they have items. And if they have items, I would see a little item mark. In this case, this electrical cabinet doesn't. However, if I look under this folder at my electrical controls, I have got an item here. And very quickly, I can go to that item or I could open it up. So I can see that that is 100005. 
going back to my bill of materials I could right click I can add row from existing item now I know the number maybe I just want to do a quick search this will bring up all the ones with a 1 and a 5 inside it okay there's my item there I can add that in to my bomb and what that will do is also add in all the components within it and its bill of materials as well so we can very quickly manipulate this design in this case this is a electrical project so it's adding in the electrical components once I'm done I can save and close that item and it will save those changes away into vault okay if we want to jump to that hold down control click on the item and it will jump to that item for me and we can see it's work in progress um, if I want to go to any of the other items within vault I can right click and I can say go to item and it will jump to it so it's very easy to get around vault within here we also have the ability to view the bomb in different ways as well should I need to um, so I'll show you that later on but um, if I go back to my top level and I look at my bill of materials you can see all our different levels in here I can search show multi-level I could show just the first level or I could show parts only the raw components within there if I wanted to I might also start filtering further so I could open up my bomb take a look at what I'm looking at here so parts only okay and maybe I want to add a filter into category and I can do okay so there are lots of different ways of doing this um, my favorite way is to take a customized view add in a group by box and then say I want to group by a particular category and in there I could say I just want to see the purchased components so I would be able to view just the electrical purchased whatever components I want again I can show it in different ways and be able to manipulate that data should I need to what we're going to do is I'm going to take this design I'm going to change its state and I'm going to move this to pre-released and what we will see is that all of the components underneath that design also get moved to pre-released um, if I hadn't activated them so they weren't turned on in the bill of materials they wouldn't be moved to pre-released after I've done that I can move these and change the state to my engineering release state here and that will release that bill of materials again there might be components that are turned off and I would be able to send those components uh, at a later date to be released if we need to we can take our top level here and we can go and say we want to export those items once we're released we want that information into our ERP system I have the ability to go through and export that data in various formats so I'll use the CSV file for now with various ways of showing the information we can either show an item number or some ERP systems such as Sage require the parent item we can then pick a file that we want to create and again with a little bit of programming know-how this can all be um, automated so we can export it out and we can pick and choose what properties we want to export out so maybe I want the PLM information exported as well as we export out we've got our name within vault but maybe our PLM system needs to use a different name maybe it's not called title maybe it's called item title inside our PLM or ERP system so I can change that name so that as I export that name comes through with it if I have a look at that uh, file that's just been created you can see that's come out it's showing all the parent IDs as it's come out with all the property information that could be imported into our other system 
So now that we've got all the data released, one of the things that we may need to be able to do is give access to that data to the wider audience. And we do that using the web client inside Vault Professional. The web client works inside Internet Explorer, can work inside Chrome and Firefox as well, I believe. So in here, you can log in with your credentials. We have the ability to make it a read-only login, or if we untick this button, if you've got a Vault Office license, you'll be able to check in non-CAD data through the web client as well. I'm going to log in as read-only to start with, and I'm going to sign in to Vault. In here, we get the option, are we looking at documents or are we looking at items? Well, in this case, I'm going to look at my item master. And as we look at items, we have the ability to see all the different files that we've got within here. Administrators have control. They can set whether you can only see um, certain released items and released files or whether you can see all files in the current state. In here, if I want to, I can see the files that we've got access to. All right, We can see the bill of materials. And I can click on any of the bomb items. It will jump to that. I can see the history of that file, so this is only on revision A. I can see where it's used, so it's used inside this electrical project. And I can see any attachments, so the documents that this item relates to. If we look at it from an inventor point of view, and I find the file that I want, if you can't find the file that you want, search for it. There's my controller. We can see the full bill of materials there. We can see it in different ways as well. So I can see the first level with icons or I can see a list. Personally I use the structured and we can expand out as required. All the property grids that you see can be customized should we want to as well. So you can see whatever properties are needed. In here I can look at the history again item 8. We can look at where it's used. We'll list the top level so it's not used anywhere and I can look at the attachments. If we need to, we can also view the, um, the thumbnail for that item and the property information to do with that item as well. Again, you can control whether there are users have access to that. If I look at the attachments, these documents, I would be able to select any of these documents to take a look at it. So we can take a look at any of these documents to look at the information. In here I can see revision A and I can see revision B. I can see clearly that one's not shaded and this one is. If I want to have a look at the, um, the file, I can click on preview. And what this will do is open up in a new window. Now in order to get this working in Chrome, you do need to download a little add-in. In the interest of time, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to download the visualization that you'd see so that you can see what will open up. Uh, the visualization is a DWF file from Design Review and we can see it's opened up here. What we can also see is that the information in my uh, revision table was filled in by that job processor. So this document was signed off. If I allow access, I can also allow access for other departments to download the raw file as well. In this case, it downloads the DWG. This can be very useful where we need to send that data out uh, for someone else to send to a supplier, or maybe maybe we're getting some uh, a DXF output, we're getting it laser cut, so our purchasing department need to download that to send to that supplier. If we look at the um, document side, we're able to, again, search any of the documents or we can click through all of our projects. And in here, we can see the release data. I can see that drawing. I can click on it. And once in here, I can see a similar bit of information. I can see the, the, the drawing thumbnail and the visualization the properties, I can show the release, I can show where it's used and what it uses. So if I look at what it uses here, I can see this item which I can click on. 
I can see all the items and I can drill right the way down into my design. It's a really handy tool for users that don't know Vault, they don't want to know Vault, they don't need to know Vault. What I can do is from the item I can right click and I can say add to change order and I can either add it to an existing one and search for the change order I want or I can create a new change order. Change orders exist in this change order tab within Vault. You can see I've got a few here. I can generate a new change should I want to and I can add data to it at a later point. Change orders have a numbering scheme and we can define different numbering schemes should we want to. I've got a very simple one here. I can put a title change the color of control unit there we go I can set a date that this has to be done by and I can start filling in other bits of information is rework required? no all this information we can define so you don't have to have all these. I need to have replied by Friday. Reason for change order was um, going to be a customer enhancement request. Priority, I'm going to do it as a regular priority. I've got a PLM system with a change order number. One, two, three, four. DMS ID, if you're using um, Autodesk PLM, you'll need this D DMS ID so that you can link to it and implementation strategy is it phased in, is it cut in or is it not applicable so I can fill in all the information that's required some of this information may be compulsory once I'm done if I've not created the change order from the item then I can add in that change order from here so I can add in files or items should I want in this case I'm going to add in my item and if I want to add in any of the children underneath it, I can say add related. So we can go through the bill of materials here and I can say well actually it's the concept body I want to change within here. So I can add that in to here as well. If any reworks required, I could tick for those particular items in this particular change order and I could add in any comments. Okay. Moving along the tabs, we can see a comments button. This works a bit like an online forum. Anyone can add comments in. As this change order is moved through the process, those comments get added in at the same time. We can see the files associated with those items in the change order. So I can take my design, let's say this one here, which is my assembly. Um, let that open up and I can view that document directly within my change order. If I need to, if the visualization doesn't come through, I can generate it, I can measure from here as well. I can see the associated item that's to do with it. This change order is going to go through a particular process. We have choice of two processes within Vault. We can have this check state or not. Um, but as it goes through the process, we need different people to do different actions. So what we can define is a routing list where different people have different roles and responsibilities as to what they can do. So, for instance, a responsible engineer can do the work, a checker can check, an approver can review and approve and close the change order. In the interest of making this easy, I'm going to put this as a new product change order where the administrator can fire the whole lot through the system. So let's save this. That's going to create the change order and we can see it getting added in to our system. At this point I can't really do very much. The reason being that I haven't got rights to this. If we look at the routing list I've been added in as the manager as a change requester. Within here if I want to I can mark up any of this any of this data 
So I can take any of the files and I can start adding red line markups to them. So again, as I say, I've got my 3D data that we can look at. I've also got my 2D data that we can see here as well. Now as I'm a user that hasn't got permissions to be able to, to edit this change order, I can't mark up the data because as far as Vault's concerned, this is not my responsibility. So let's close down this change order, let's log out, and let's log in as the administrator who has access to this change order. Once we're logged in, we can see we have a work list at the side, and if I click on any of these, we will get taken to the relevant change order. There we have it there. It doesn't matter where I am in Vault. Okay. I can click on that and it will take me to that change order. That change order I can see is currently in create status. So this is being created. It can then be moved on through the various states. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this change order and I'm going to submit it through for checking. We can write a comment that can also be emailed out to whoever's next in the chain. So in this case it could be someone that's creating the change order off the shop floor. This will then go through to the engineering manager who will then get a notification. Looks a little bit like an email notification at the bottom of the screen and will appear on their work list. That user can then go into the change order and can add various people into the routing list. So maybe we are, we're adding in Dave Designer and we're going to say he's going to be a responsible engineer. They can be added into the list and once we're done we can submit this through ready to, for work to be done. Dave Designer then gets work, he can find the records, review the change, he can take our files that we have here, edit the data, so let's um, edit our change order take our files, change the state, move them to work in progress okay, and then m make the relevant changes. Once the designer is done, if he tries to put this change order through to checking, you're going to get a little warning. You can't put something through to checking if that work is currently work in progress. What our designer would need to do is get all the records to a state where the state is on our pre-released or our check state. Once done, they can submit that through for checking. Our checker can then check the files. Um, he can eject, uh, reject or approve those design changes and mark up again if required. So let's approve the change. That then goes through for the manager to review against the change request. He can close out the change order, that's approved. And finally, we can set the effectivity of the items as to when we want these released. So we can say what day does that change become effective on. Nine times out of ten, that will be immediately. Once I'm done, that change order is closed out. We will see all the statuses it's come through, we'll see the files that have been affected and any uh, markups that are added in. We can see the workflow that we went through and I can see who did that change and when as well. If I look at one of my other change orders you can see that that's gone through the process twice. Within here we can also see one of my change, uh, my markups. So if we look at the uh, DWF file here you'll be able to see that I've got a drawing that I've managed to add in a red line markup did not attach, there's obviously a problem with that drawing they can go back and then start making those corrections hopefully that's given you a kind of an overview as to what's in Vault um, it is a fair sized product if you go for Vault Professional uh, that integrates fully with your design workflows um, it can be staged, so we can start using Vault to just store your documents, we can introduce document control, and then at a later date introduce change orders and items as required. Um, 
If you want more information, please get in contact. My name is Chris Atherton from Symmetry. We have more information on our website, symmetry.co.uk.